As your application grows, your database starts to struggle. Why? As data grows, so does the load on your database. More CPU usage, more memory usage, more disk usage. One way to deal with this is by vertically scaling your database, having a better CPU, a faster disk, and more memory. But vertical scaling has limits. At some point, even the most powerful hardware can't keep up. Not even your wallet, to be honest. And this, my friends, is where database sharding comes in. So what is database sharding? Think about it in the following way. You have a huge database, and now you split it in small pieces. To each of those small pieces, we call it shards. Each shard will work as an independent database and will have just part of the data. Think about it as organizing a library per sections. So instead of having a huge building that is a library that has books from all the types, and maybe you have every single thing organized by author, now let's say that you organize everything by sections. So you split your library into sections. So now when you need to look for a given book, for example, you want a cookbook, you know where is the section for cookbooks. You want history, you know where to go. You want foreign language, you know where to go. You have each one of those individual sections of your library dedicated to a specific role. So in summary, it's faster and more efficient. And now does it work? So we can start the process of sharding by looking into a huge database. Now we want to split it in several different small databases. So shards. That means that we want to spread the data across those shards. That also means that it will imply that the multiple shards have the same schema. Each one of those shards will live inside of a node, a server. To the node, the server, we call it the physical shard. To the data that lives inside of that node, we call it the logic shard. One interesting thing about this approach is that technically, you can have multiple logical shards inside of a single physical shard. But now that we have different databases, different places where the data can be, and the data will not be in both places at the same time, that means that we need a routing mechanism. We need to find a way to understand where that data should be. For that, we need a sharding key. The sharding key can be, for example, a property of your data. It can be something like your client ID, it can be a username, it can be a country, it can be several different things. But basically, it's some data that we look into it and we take the decision, this should go to this place or to a different place. And also, when you need to look for it, we know where we need to go. The same example as the library. If the book category is the sharding key, you know that if you are looking for science fiction, you know the shard that you need to go to. This means that on top of the shards, we need some software taking the decisions of the routing to understand where to look for data, where to write the data. This software can be part of the database system that you are using, and it will be doing automatic sharding, or it needs to be implemented manually. If you are using a database system that has sharding in place, if it's capable of doing that automatically, it's quite valuable because it will do some things that you need to implement yourself that can be quite tricky. But let's talk about what we need to do and what that type of software is doing if you need to implement it yourself. So now we know that you will segregate the data into small pieces into small buckets, different shards, small databases, and we know that we need to root data into those. And one thing that we want to avoid is to have hotspots. And what's that? So think about the following scenario. You are building a social network and you decide to shard data, for example, data regarding likes on content by the author ID. So that means that if I am the author number one, I will live in the given shard. You are the author number two, you live in a, another shard. And when someone likes one of our posts, the data for that like will live in our own uh, little shard. So if you like my post, it will live on shard number one. If I like your post, that like will live in shard number two. But this can lead to a typical problem, that is the celebrity problem. It means that at a given moment, I might have someone inside of my system that is a celebrity and the amount of data related to that user is 
huge when compared to the other users of my system. That means that the distribution of data across my different shards will not be quite the same. It's an uneven distribution. And one of the goals when we try to do sharding is to have an even distribution of data. It's important to keep things at balance. You don't want one of the shards becoming an hotspot, a place where everyone is going to, and now I have a problem. To solve this, we have some techniques. We call it the sharding techniques. Sharding techniques are different techniques to decide how to shard data. And that can depend on the use case that you are addressing. Let's see some examples. We have the range-based sharding. Range-based sharding is when we define different ranges of data. And based on those ranges, we take a decision where to place the data. Let's see two different examples. I can have something like, based on age, I can take a decision that from 0 to 10, it will live on this shard. From 10 to 25, it goes into a different shard. 25 to 45, it goes to another one, and so on and so forth. Or, for example, imagine that you want to shard your client's table. So... You can organize that based on the first letter of the name of the client. So you could organize as something like from A to uh, J will go into a shard, K to Z go to another shard. The problem of this approach is that it's an approach that's quite uh, blind. You don't know if you will get into a problem or not. So it can lead to that uneven distribution. Because beforehand, you don't know if you'll have more clients with uh, a name starting with A, for example. For example, in the past, it was a common technique for companies to pick a name starting with A because that way they will be a first on the phone book. That led to more companies with names starting with A than another different name. Another technique is using geo-based sharding. Geo-based sharding is when you define, for example, the location of your client as the sharding key. For example, when your client creates the profile and says, I'm Guy, I'm from Portugal, I will live in a given shard, for example, for Europe or for Portugal or even for my city. The advantage of this approach is not the fact of avoiding those hotspots, but above all is by reducing latency. By having a shard specific for clients from Europe and another one for clients from the US, I can reduce latency and improve the user experience by placing those shards closer to the user. And one important thing here is to decide what's that key that takes that decision. Because for example, if I'm expecting to use the location where the request is coming in, that might change. For example, I'm from Portugal and I might be on the Portuguese shard, but then if I travel to the UK and I try to do something in the system from the UK, that will lead to a problem. You will not find my data on the shard that you are expecting. So we need to define a static property to simplify our lives on those cases. Otherwise, it might be a nightmare. A different strategy that allows you a bit more of dynamism of moving things around when you start seeing those hotspots appearing is by using a directory based sharding. In this approach, we come up with a table that will work as a reference guide to understand where that shard lives, where that data lives. Imagine the scenario of the celebrity. So you have your clients spread across different shards, but now you notice that you have one client that takes most of the, the use of that database as a lot of data into that shard. So you want to move it into a different shard. So by using the directory, you can go to the table and point it to a different place. The problem of this approach is the complexity to implement something like that. But also there's one problem with that approach is that now you have one table that is extremely important for the whole system. So in order to guarantee the reliability of the complete system, you need to make sure that that table is always ready to be used. And that can also create a constraint for performance as well. Another approach is by using hash-based sharding. Hash-based sharding defines a mathematical function that will calculate the shard where the data should go. This strategy is great for distributing the load because you can have a mathematical function that will return always the same value for a given input. So it's consistent, is repeatable, and you can run it multiple times and find that distribution that you are looking for. 
So imagine that you have a huge table with the orders of your system. On that case, you can use the order ID as the input for that mathematical function that will return an output saying, okay, it should go to shard one, shard two, shard three, shard four, whatever, and it will always return the same value for the same order ID. That will ensure an even distribution of the data across the different shards. The problem with this approach is that if you are looking for low latency in a globally available system, you might want to go into an approach more like geo-based sharding. So that means that there's no single best solution for the sharding strategy. You need to take a decision based on your use case. For example, if you are building a game, an online game, and when a player wants to join, he needs to join a server, that's the process of defining a shard and limit the scope of every single thing happening inside of that server to a given shard. If you are building something like a global platform of e-commerce, you might need to go with geo-based sharding. But if you are building something like a product catalog, maybe the product category might be the sharding key that you are looking for. So why is sharding such a big deal? Let's break it down. First, sharding improves performance. With fewer rows to scan, the queries will run faster. We also have scalability. If we need to scale the system, we just need to bring more shards instead of scaling vertically the database. And third, it adds fault tolerance to the system. If one shard goes down, the rest of the shards can keep running. And finally, it brings cost efficiency. Instead of needing high-end servers to run our huge database, we can run our servers in commodity hardware. However, it's not a perfect world. There are some challenges when we go with sharding. The first and obvious one is that it brings complexity in the setup, complexity to maintain it. The other one is how difficult it is to do queries that will join data across different shards. It can be extremely difficult, extremely painful to do that. Also, it will increase the maintainability costs because now you need to maintain different databases instead of one. Okay, you need to monitor different databases, different servers, so that will increase the maintainability cost as well. And while in terms of infrastructure costs, it might be more efficient, in terms of operational costs, they will increase. Because now you need to monitor and maintain different servers because each shard is running a different node. Due to the fact that all the shards should represent the same data, it's important that when we perform something like database migrations, we have them in sync across all of those shards. That increases the complexity of rolling out those types of changes. And finally, there's a new challenge regarding the distribution of data by picking the correct sharding strategy. Sometimes we'll realize that we didn't pick the correct approach, or maybe because we have one client that grows too fast, it might bring a problem. And now we need to rebalance those shards. We need to take a different approach. And the biggest challenge is that if we pick a bad sharding key, we might get into a place where we have an uneven distribution of data. That can happen for different types of reasons. We might in fact have picked the wrong property to be our sharding key, or we decided to go with the wrong strategy, or even we underestimated the growth of a given shard. That leads to the question, when should we use database sharding? Examples of good use cases is, for example, when your database has a ton of data with a lot of traffic, or when you have a global distributed system and you want to have your data close to the place where it's being used to reduce latency. However, I will not recommend to use it if you have a small data set, if you don't have that huge traffic with a ton of data and huge data set, or when your application has requirements regarding query capabilities that demand joining data across different types of tables and exploring a lot of data combined. And on those cases, sharding is not ideal. On those scenarios, there's other possibilities that you can consider like scaling vertically, there's still places to scale vertically your database, or using partitioning inside of a single database by using table partitioning. While database sharding is not a one-size-fits-all type of solution, it's the first type of thing that we need to think when we are designing a system to scale. So if you find this system design type of content useful, please let me know in the comments. And now I think you will like to watch this video right here. And I will see you in the next one.